Remember last week we started discussing what we call things you must do to generate power, to generate influence, to generate favor. And what I'm about to share this morning is a simple thing almost every one of us know, but we don't do it. And most of us are guilty. We are guilty in this area. So I want you to open your heart. If you will take this message this morning, if you will receive this message this morning, I can guarantee you your life will change forever. <laughs> Write this, 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 things, this few things down if you can. One of the most powerful weapons in winning your case in the court of public opinion and in the court of heaven is through humility. I repeat again, one of the most powerful weapons in winning your case in the court of public of, of opinion and in the court of heaven, amen, is through humility. Humility, if you can practice humility, you can win without having to pray for 40 days. Hello, somebody. Some of us are facing so much pressure at workplace, challenges in our home front, and more, amen, simply because of our failure to navigate this path called humility. Many of us have failed navigating the path of humility. Most marriages that are facing serious challenges today is because one of the partners have refused to humble themselves. If you're not willing to humble yourself, you will face so many challenges. It doesn't matter your 40 days dry fasting. After your fasting, if you still cannot humble yourself, you will experience challenges in your life. Hello, somebody. To be honest, most of those problems would not have emanated in the first place if we had followed the pathway of humility or the lifting prescription called humility. Humility is actually lifting prescri prescription. If you want to be exalted, you need to come to a place where you start learning to humble yourself. And what I'm sharing this morning is not every one of us have these challenges. Even if you're humble, there are moments in your life you refuse to humble yourself. So we all are guilty. This is not a message for, you know, tear them, you know. Sometimes people, some people say, tear them, you know, tear them. This is a message for all of us. So you need to come to a place of humbling yourself. Employing this prescription would save you from the stress of spending so much money to win your case, to buy your freedom and connections at, at workplace and more. Amen. It will save you from working extreme hard to be accepted amongst the mighty. Many times some of us want to be accepted. You truly want to be accepted among your friends, among your colleagues, among your peers, but they keep rejecting you and you keep wondering why. It shows that you are not humble. In fact, it will, it will save you the burden of long fasting and prayers to solve certain challenges. Some of you know that many of us fast a lot, and uh, we really we worship a lot, but we keep having blockages everywhere. People keep blocking you. They don't want to have anything to do with you, and you keep wondering why is it so? Uh, hello, somebody. Sometimes it's not because you're not a good prayer warrior. It's not because you're not looking good. It's not because you're not brilliant. It's just that you've refused to humble yourself. Some people will even come to church, no matter what the pastor says, they say, who are you to talk to us? Hello, somebody. But somebody must talk to you whether you like it or not. When you went to, you know, to school, somebody taught you. You went to diary shop, somebody served you. Hello, somebody. Anywhere you go, the car you came with this morning, somebody bad. it. So somebody must talk to you. Somebody must lead you. That is how God has structured, you know, life. As a matter of fact, one of the reasons God cannot open certain doors for you now is because those doors will end up becoming your pathway of destruction. A lot of us are praying, God, you know, open door, open door, Lord, give me connection, give me a good job. That job is going to weigh you down. It's going to destroy you because you will be pressured in such a way that you will start reacting, fighting everybody and lose your peace. 
There are certain structures that God is looking for in our life. If you must navigate the pathway of greatness, you need to you know, put certain structures in place. Don't even pray for God to give you billions now. Some of you, if God gives you a billion dollars, right? Even 500,000, you will be gone. <laughs> you will not even be in church again. If God gives you one billion dollars, then we will just start, you know, preparing for this child. You, you just get ready to, that money will kill, God forbid. So there are things you don't ask for until you've, got, you've gotten this aspect of your life in order. And if we quickly turn to the book of James, chapter 4, 6 to 7 and 10. James 4, 6 to 7 and 10. I'm taking us somewhere. James 4, 6 to 7 and 10. It says, but he gives even more grace to stand against. But he gives us even more grace to stand against such evil desire. Use a knife here. Or a KJV. Okay. He says, but he gives us more grace. God gives more grace. Hello. If you ask God for more grace in certain aspect of your life, he will give it to you. Maybe you're not somebody that used to patient. Maybe you're dealing with lust. Maybe you're dealing with a uh, lot of anger. And you say, Lord, I need more grace in this area. The Bible says God gives more grace. In other words, you can grow from grace to grace. From glory to glory. Now, it says, that is why scripture says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So we have seen here, he gives more grace, he opposes the pride, that is also given. Opposing is given, and he gives more grace to the humble. So we see, we see that God is a giving God, but depending in the pendulum, you find yourself. Keep going, then in verse 3 it says, submit yourself then to God. If God gives grace to the humble, if God exalts the humble, he said, this is how it looks like to be exalted, to submit yourself, you know, then be humble to God. Submit yourself then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Then in verse 10, keep going. In verse 10 he says, humble yourself. He didn't say, if God humble you, you'll be in Say, Nebo, if God humbles you, you will be in trouble. So don't ever allow God to come to a place of humbling you. Because if God does it himself, get ready for trouble. So he said, humble yourself before the Lord and he will lift you up. So the, the prescription of being lifted is to humble yourself. As a matter of fact, as I was thinking of this fashion, of this teaching, I realized that humility sometimes could be more powerful than your faith. Just my opinion. I'm not making doctrine out of it. Humility, to have that disposition of humility, okay, it could give you so much than your faith. Some people will not even care if you have faith, if you're lifting up your shoulder. They will kick you out. But if you come here and humble yourself, you can get anything. So he said, humble yourself. Do you want to be lifted? Simple prescription. Do you want to be lifted? He said, humble yourself. And he will lift you up. So that means the more you go down like this, the more God lifts you up. There's no better way to be lifted than to apply these elements here. Are we talking somebody? Now, this brought me to a place, since this week I've been thinking, we always talk of how God promoted Mordecai. But I can tell you, if Mordecai had humbled himself earlier, he wouldn't need all that headache. And I'm going to tell you, I have never heard any pastor talking about the weakness of Mordecai. We only talk about the victory. Talk of the victory of Mordecai. How God blessed him. How he was promoted. How God gave him victory. We thank God for that. And God did that because of his covenant. The covenant of the Jews with God. 
But most of the problem that happened to Mordecai, most of the challenges that he faced was as a result of his own making. I can assure you now, some of the challenges you're dealing with is as a result of your own making. It's because we have refused to apply simple principles. I wish to hear God's people. And I, I want to show you this, and I want us to read this scripture with all our heart. The book of Esther chapter 3. We're going to do from 1 to 6. Use a um, new living. We'll make it easy. Let's see why Mordecai, the whole Jews went through so much pain. They went through a turbulent time because of one man's I mean, unwillingness to humble himself. Am I wasting your time? There's some time later, King Sisters promoting him and son of Hamadeta, the Ag Agagite, over all the other nobles. God will promote you, people. I say, our king is about to promote you. <laughs> Making him the most powerful official in the, empire, in the empire. This is actually what God knows how to do. God can raise you and make you one of the most powerful person in your kindred, in your community, in your place of work. And there are many of you now that have that mantle. Amen. In the spirit, you are already promoted, aided by God to be count. So the king promoted him and made him one of the most powerful officials. If the king of this earth, if the kings of this earth knows how to promote human beings, how much more the king of heaven? So all the king's officials would bow down before Haman to show him what? Respect. And there is nothing wrong showing respect to those in power. Okay? Whenever he passed by, for so the king had commanded. What is Who commanded? Hello. I want you to be friendly this morning. Hello, somebody. So, so the king had what? Commanded. It wasn't, you know, a Haman that commanded for him to be respected and honored and bowed to. It was the king of the whole empire. Hello, somebody. But Mordecai refused to bow down or show him respect. The king have said, everybody, whenever you see him and bow and greet him. But him man refused. Mordecai refused. Why will you refuse? Are you the king? If you don't want to obey the command of the king, resign your job. You don't need to be a security man. You don't need to be in the palace. If you just don't like it, resign and go home. But he refused to bow. Let's keep going. Then the palace officials at the king's gate asked Mordecai, why are you disobeying the king's command? Why are you behaving this way? Sometimes our parents ask us, the way you're behaving is not going to lead you anyway. Say, no, I'm a big boy now. You know somebody? And in a few years you realize that you're paying the price of your disobedience. Why are you okay? They spoke to him day after day. So it's not that God wasn't speaking to him, God was speaking to him through the people. But still, he refused to comply. And this is the nature of some of us here with the order. So they spoke to Haman about this to see if he would tolerate Mordecai's conduct. Since Mordecai had told them he was a Jew. Found Mordecai. Haman did not even notice that this guy wasn't respecting him. It was the people <laughs> that even brought it to his attention. So he suddenly started thinking about it. Keep going. The, when Haman saw that Mordecai would not bow down or show him respect, if you don't want to bow down, please, at least you can show respect. He was filled with what? Rage. Do you know, not saying good morning to people that are ahead of you can sack you from your job. It could keep you in one spot for, for seven years. Simple because you don't greet anybody. It could pray and fast and bind demons. Think that it's demon from your father's house. No, you are the demon that is dealing with yourself. A lot of people are their saved demon. I can, I can guarantee you. He refused. So this guy was raging. Keep going. As a result of that, look at what he did. He had learned of Mordecai's nationality. 
So he decided it was not enough to lay hands on Mordecai alone. Instead, he looked for a way to destroy all the Jews throughout the entire empire of Sessus. Look at that. Because of what Mordecai refused to do, this man decided just to kill him alone is not going to be enough for me. I better wipe away his what? Entire lineage and his nation. Everyone that is connected to him. People that, is belong, people that come from his part of the world. I better wipe them out. And so as I think of this, the Lord says to me, some of the family problem you are dealing with today come from one person. I wish to hear somebody. Anytime you see a community, pro a family problem, it comes from one person from that family. If you see a, 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 you know, a local government problem or a county problem, it comes from a family. If you see a state problem, it comes from a local government. If you see a national problem, it comes from a state. And if you see a world problem, it comes from a nation. Osama bin Laden was born from where? You know, he was born in Saudi Arabia. But he caused so much pain that after World Trade Center was, you know, blown up, the world has never been the same. Go to the airport and see how you are subjected to such an because of what Osama did. Osama was born, you know, from a family. So because of what Mordecai did, this man planned to wipe away the whole Jews. I wish to hear God's people. Because of one person's what? Unwillingness to humble himself. Your family may be suffering today because you don't have enough salary, enough wages to take care of them, enough money. And why is it that you don't have enough money? Maybe because of your lack of promotion. And why have you not been promoted? Because you are not honoring. You are not humble. So you, you think it's just about you and it's affecting your family. You don't have enough food on your table for you and your family because you don't have enough money. Why? You've not chosen to humble yourself. Are we talking? When you see husband and wife fighting, fighting, if one of them will humble themselves, there will be no problem to fight. No, there will be no issues to solve. The pastor's wife said, when, he, when she got married, she was terrible. And she was fighting all the time with the husband. And the husband was some, became something else because of the way she was re reacting. So the husband was also reacting in that same pattern. And one day God said to her, you're going to destroy your marriage. If you don't change, you will destroy this marriage. Hello, somebody. <laughs> when God said that to her, she started working on herself. And when she started working on herself, she suddenly discovered that the husband start, stopped doing what he was doing. And she asked the husband after some time, say, you're no longer behaving the way you used to treat me. The man said, nothing to fight about because you have changed. <laughs> oh, you're too quiet on me, somebody. <laughs> the man said, nothing to fight about. That because you yourself have changed. So some of the things you are going to counsel us, asking everybody to pray for you, is in your hand. If you can walk on yourself, you will find out that those things are not the problem. It is the problem by your own making. The whole nation of Jews had a headache. I will hear somebody. There was so much headache among the people. Because of a, a one man that refused to obey the word of the king. In the ancient time, even when the king promoted Joseph, he asked the people to bow to Joseph. As he rode on the horse, the people we have been, we are asked to bow. When, the, when Joseph brothers visited him in Egypt, they saw him in the bow. It shows humility. When, and when a man called Cornelius saw Peter, Peter came to, you know, you know you, some of you know the story, he had a dream, and God asked him to invite Peter. He invited Peter. Immediately Peter arrived in the Gentile nation. He did what? He bowed, he left prostrate, prostrate before the man. It, it's not about man worship. 
is a way of showing humility, showing honor. The more you go understand, what that word understand is two synonyms. Under and stand. So for you to stand, you must go under. No one that have never gone under ever stands. Tell me where they are. And I will tell you what has happened to them. In fact, when children are born, you know they start crawling. Do they start walking? They start crawling first before they start what? standing. Everyone needs to crawl before somebody. If you must stand in your walk with God. Oh, you're not, you're not. Who do I preach to? Ever somebody? If every morning just stand up. You see your, your bus. It's a high bus. And you keep shaking. The day they will... <laughs> The day that we retrench people, you may be the first to be retrenched. It's not because you're not a good worker. It's because you are not being humble. People hate men and women that are not humble. Even though some of those things we hate is also in us. Every one of us deals with that problem. Are we talking God's people? I hope the young people are following me. So, do you want to be promoted? Do you want to be li lifted? Follow the word of the king. What does the king say in the book of James chapter 4 verse 6 and 10? He says, humble yourself under the mighty arms of the Lord and he will what? lift you up. That's the word of the king. We saw the word of the king in what? Esther chapter 3 verse 2. The king commanded the people to bow before Haman. But Haman, but Mordecai refused the word of the king. Many of you are suffering because you have refused the word of the king. You have chosen not to obey the word of the king. You are currently obeying your feelings. Currently obeying the way you think, the way you feel, not the word of God. But what does the word of God say concerning that problem? Hello, somebody. You have taken that problem on, onto yourself or open yourself because you simply refuse to do what God wants you to do. The other day I was talking on sacrifice that no one ever become great without doing sacrifice or making sacrifice. You cannot, you know, work in power if you don't know how to sacrifice something. Even God himself had to send his son and put him on the altar of sacrifice before he resurrected. And now he's at the right hand of the Father. He also been worshipped by the whole world. We are here today because Jesus went through what? Went through slaughtering. He was slaughtered. His flesh died and he resurrected again. If you want to be honored, if you want to become anything in this world, you must put yourself on the altar of sacrifice. Bear yourself on that altar. That is how you can become. Hello, somebody. If you're not willing to bear yourself on the altar of sacrifice and ask God to take this flesh, you know, there's certain flesh that you are contending with, even though you don't want nobody to talk to you, but you know that you've got some problem. Oh, I don't know who I'm talking to right now. Some of us know that we have issues. And this aspect of our life, you don't want nobody to, to talk to you about it. You don't want nobody to tell you that this is what is wrong. But the earlier you know it, the better it is for you. If you don't want to do the will of God, get ready for conflict. Get ready for trouble. Get ready for pain. Get ready for challenge. Get ready for opposition. If you don't want to do the will of God. Are we still talking? One day, one, one, of, one of my schoolmates came to me some years ago. I was in my country. He was talking big of, you know, that he's doing this, he's doing this. You know, money is going to come. And, he, and yet he came to ask me for money. Because of the way he was just making mad. We call it, make, you know. You know somebody? <laughs> Make him mad. That's what we call it here. 
I, I didn't want to give him nothing and I didn't give him. I had the money, but I refused to give him because the shoulder was to the extreme. Hello, somebody. If you don't know how to humble yourself, you will die before your time. Are we talking somebody? Many years ago, when I was in my country, uh, I was doing business, and this man is a very tough man. Everybody fears him. So one day he did something to me, and I stood him. I quarreled with him. Somebody came, came to me and said, you go and beg him. He said, because he's going to fix you up. Hello, <laughs> somebody. Because what, we have some corrupt policemen. Here we go there and plan with them. They will come and plan something and say, you, it's you. And they can plan something in your shop, in your house. The guy told me that this guy have, you know, has finished so many people. He said, if I don't go and beg him, this man is going to sell me. I knew I was right, but I humbled myself. I went there. <laughs> I, I, I went there like, like ice water on my body. I said, Sir, I'm so sorry. So sorry. <laughs> I, I really apologized. Then he said, okay, because you have apologized. That means he was planning to do something against me. But I needed to have, I just need my peace. I better, you know, drink that, you know, eat that humble cake. <laughs> and, and have my peace. Than for anybody to plan something in my house. And then call the police. And then I will go to the court. They didn't do it. I said, I don't do it. I didn't do it. I didn't. I just want that. I humbled myself. When I was, you know, when we are going through our document problem. There's a man that needed to write me a particular document. He did something. I said to myself, I don't want to talk to him. I just leave him. I just, I, I just look on the guard. But when that case amplified, when the challenge overwhelmed me, but at the time, they hold our documents, and I needed that letter from him. I had to, told myself about two years ago, I said, I'm not going to go to him. I will not go to him. I woke up in one early morning. I was just there thinking, what do I do with my life? Holy Ghost said, go to him. Go to him. Say, you better go to him. I give him a call, Lord, sir. <laughs> How are you, sir? Please, can I see you? I want to see you. Okay. He agreed. We met. If I God told me, went, go with your computer. We met at Hamburger, Hamburger King, or Burger King in Manukau. I don't know. I'm, put, I'm putting the boat together. And I said, this is what I need. Because of one thing he did, that was why I was having challenges. So I needed him to revive the things he did because of what he said to the immigration. So he, he told me, I showed him that the, I, I got this thing from immigration. They told me that you said something. Like, he was looking at that. He said, oh, he didn't know. He, he was going through so much stress. He didn't know that he said that. I said, okay, they just need a simple letter. If you can just write that, the, what you say, you no longer say. You, 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 just, you didn't mean it. You just, <laughs> you, <laughs> you, you just said it when you were sleepy. <laughs> he agreed. Because I knew that once I leave that scene, the enemy will hijack his mind again. We write in, the, in, in, in Boga King Manako there. We, I write, he asked me, what do you want? I should write it. I just write it down. You know somebody? He read it. And we went up at Westfield Mall. And printed it and he signed. I took the paper and went to my lawyer immediately. I gave it to him. After two days, he came back to me. But this, this day, he called me. He said, oh, I shouldn't have write that letter. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, he can just call you. You know, he should, I, he shouldn't have write it. You know, it, I'm telling you, the next day, he called me. He was tense. I said, don't worry. There's nothing there. You, all, you, you, all you've done is just say the truth. You just said exactly what the truth, you know, it was all about. I said, if you want, I can take you to my lawyer so that, you know, he's okay, let's go to my lawyer. I took him to my lawyer. That, that was how serious he was. I took, <laughs> I took the lawyer calmed him down. I said, don't worry, you know, they're not going to come after you. you. All you did, you said the truth. Oh, that, and, and he calmed down. Though he was still tense. But I needed to humble myself and go to him. After one week or two weeks, immigration approved the, the working visa. The working visa. And if I did not go, if I am still lifting up my shoulder, God will fight for me. There are prayers men hears, and they are the ones God hears. Certain prayers go to God, and some prayers go to men. You're, you're, you're too good for me. I don't, I don't know if I can be preaching to Liz alone. 
there are prayers only men we answer it. If men refuse to move, even sometimes God could ask men to bless you. I listened to a great man of God called Bishop Bismarck from Zimbabwe. He said he was traveling to Zimbabwe. God told him that we are doing some medical things that he was going to release money to him. So he went to this church and he was believing God told him the man that was supposed to give him that money he needed for medical services in Zimbabwe you know, was in that church. He said after preaching and praying and he left, the man never came to him. He cried and cried. I said, God, he told me that this man was in the service. Why is it that he did not you know, show up. God said, no. Yes, the man was actually there. He said, but giving is in the realms of human will. He said, I told him to give. But he chose out of his own will not to give. He said, but I'm going to raise another person. I wish to hear. So he said, that day was that he wanted to leave. One man of God called him and said, Bishop Bismarck, I want you to come and pray for our church. Well, we have a new building. We are still building it. I just want you to come and march around there and uh, just release prayer. He told him, I'm leaving tonight. The man said, don't worry. We can change your ticket. He said, no, I must go. The man said, please come. I want you to come and just put a blessing, a seal on that pro project. So he agreed. When he got there, after praying, if I, I hope I don't miss the figure. I think the man told the, 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 the secretary, say, write a check. I, I may miss the figure. Please don't crucify me if you got a different figure later. The man told the secretary, say, write a check. Is it about 50,000? Then after the secretary write the check, the man came to him and said, I feel in my heart, God wants us to give you $100,000. Hello, somebody. So sometimes, even if God wants her to give me anything, if she refuses to give me, God is not going to force her. Hello, somebody. God may still raise another person. It may take some time. So there are prayers God answers. And there are prayers men answer. Many, some prayers don't go to God. It goes to men. He will say, where is it in the Bible? Meet me later and I will show you. <laughs> I wish to hear somebody. So if you want to be lifted, you need to choose to do what? Humble yourself. I wish to hear. Now, go to Esther, Esther chapter 3, 12 to 13. Because of Mordecai's unwillingness to humble himself before Haman, Haman got the king to enact wicked decree against the whole nation of Jews. I just want to show you for it. Because this same month, Mordecai, that refused to humble themselves. Had to do it when the, you know, the going got tough. Many of you, you, you only do stuff when everything has already fallen apart. Hello, somebody. Some years ago, a lady used to come to counseling. I keep telling her what to do, do the right thing. She will not do it. She, sometimes she will take the husband back, pack it outside, say, you can go, leave, leave. Hello, somebody. She will come out, tell her, do the opposite, tell her what she will not do it. She he keep doing, she keep doing that from time to time. Whenever they have disagreement, she will move the man's clothes outside the house. And finally, the man took his clothes and never came back. She came back to me, she will call me, she said, I'm foolish, I'm foolish, I'm foolish. Oh, you're not even talking to me. <laughs> She was telling herself, and the man have gone and gone forever. Now the man have remarried. She will call me in pain from time to time. I'm foolish. I say, yes, you are. <laughs> you refuse to listen. Say to somebody, listen, no, listen, listen. You, you're too quiet this morning. You're too calm on me. I told somebody, say, when you give birth to a baby, call that baby listen. <laughs> Because she doesn't listen. I say, that will remind you. <laughs> I said, call your baby listen. Now, let's see what this guy did. Soon on April 17, oh, the king's secretary, we are summoned. And the decree was written exactly as Haman dictated it. It was sent to the king's highest officers, the governors of the, of, of the respective province, and the nobles of each province in their own script and languages. 
decree was written in the name of King Cecesis and sealed with the king's signet ring. Then in verse 13, watch it. Now, these dispatches were sent by, you know, swift messengers into the province of the empire, giving the order that all Jews young and old, including women and children, must be killed. Because of who? Haman's, you no know, Mordecai's unwillingness to humble himself. Slaughtered and annihilated on a single day. This was scheduled to happen on March 7. Anytime the enemy wanted to pull, kill you, he put a date on it. Amen. Of the next year, the property of the Jews would be given to those who killed them. You see, the Jews were to be wiped out because of one man's disobedience. Because of one man's, you know, unwillingness to be humble. And the, the people were troubled because of this decree. Many of you today, some of the things that are troubling you, you created it. If you done the right thing from the beginning, you will not be where you are now. Hello, somebody. You will not be begging bread. You will not be kneeling like a baby. You will not be sick. It's because you have refused to do the right thing. I wish still talk. And then I'm going to come back to this verse 13 and say something about death. But go to chapter 4. In chapter 4, we see how Haman responded. Oh my God. Am I just jumping the scripture or do I slow down? Okay, go to chapter 4, from 1. From 1. In chapter 4, from 1, let's see hey, Haman, how Haman responded. When Haman heard that news, everybody pay attention. When Mordecai learned about all that had been done, he tore his what? Clothes. The same man that would not bow. Hello, somebody. You know, put on bull, bull, bull up and ashes. This thing you put it on when you are mourning. And mourning is a moment of humility. And went out into the city crying with a loud uh, with, with, with a loud and bitter well. Hello, somebody. All he needed to do in order not to spirit the stress. Hello, somebody. Is to do what the king said in chapter 3, verse 2. That is all he needed to do. There is no need for this pain. There is no need for this welling. There is no need for this crisis. Keep going. I wish to hear. He went as far as the gate of the palace. For no one was allowed to enter the palace gate while we are in close of money. Close of humility. Keep going. No. And as, in, as, as news of the king's decree reached all province, there was great mourning among the Jews. Among the Jews. Your family members are crying today because of your attitude. Your, your children are in pain because of your attitude. They fasted, wept, and well, and many people lay in what? In a bullab and ashes. The force of humility came upon them by force. Because him, uh, Mordecai, refused to bow. Now he is bowing. Keep going. In verse 4. When a Queen Esther may, when Queen Esther may, and you know, came and told her about Mordecai, she was deeply distressed. She sent clothing to him to replace the bullet, but he refused it. Have you been in that situation where you refuse to eat? There is food. Even when you eat that food, that food is not even tasty. I wish to hear. You eat the food, but it is not tasty in your mouth. Have you been there before, somebody? The food is no longer tasty. You have clothes, but you can't even put it on. You keep putting on one cloth. You are under pressure. You have makeup, but you forgot you have it. Hello, somebody. People think, keep, what is the problem? It's because you have imposed pressure on yourself. You are going through the pressure of what you refused to do yesterday or yesterday. That is what you're facing now. 
I wish to hear somebody. I can guarantee you that 50% of our problem today is what we created. It's what we call. If you can receive this word, let me show you this scripture. Please don't be tired. Most of our young people, some of you, are, you're looking like tired right now. I'm tired. No. We're just doing like one hour, one hour. Hello, my friend. How are you doing? <laughs> you know, we stay in Facebook more than one hour. You know what I'm talking about? How, how are you doing? Yeah, we, we do Facebook more than one hour, right? So we can do Jesus one hour. God, I love you, I love you, I love you, man. <laughs> we can do Jesus one hour. Say, neighbor, we can do Jesus one hour. If, if you can always listen to your home gear, hey, little baby, you know what happened today? She put another, face, another picture on the Instagram. Have you seen it? Unless somebody, two hours, you are, you know, shouting. Goggling. Hello, somebody. You're goggling with Satan. Sometimes he doesn't even know who you're talking to. Now we are talking to Jesus. And so we want you to pay attention. Am I talking to somebody? Oh, glory. Help me, Jesus. So let's quickly look at this scripture. Please move to, um, I'm looking for a place. Is it 13? Lord, help me. I'm looking for a place where Esther, humble herself too. I think in three, is it three? Three, 18, if not. Oh, okay, before I'm, I, I see, show you there, let me show you something. In verse 13, go to verse 13 of Esther 3. Esther 3, verse 13. In that verse 13, there's something I sh the Lord showed me this morning that struck me. And I want you to pay attention to this. The statues we have sent, we have read it before, by swift messengers. Okay? It's from the province of the empire. Giving the order that all Jews, young and old, including women and children, must be killed, slaughtered, and annihilated on a single day. Now, what interest, interest me was this. This was scheduled to happen on March 7 of the next year. The property of the Jews would be given to those who killed them. And the Lord said to me this morning, when the enemy wants to kill you, he will put a date on it. He will put a date on it. They say on the month of March, on, 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 on day nine, they will take you out. That day you missed that accident. You were actually planned to be terminated. There was a plan by hell to terminate you. You happened to succeed or to overcome because of your covenant with God. But in the spirit, you were meant to be terminated. Hello, somebody. And the Lord, and the Bible, uh, I also realized that even when God wants to save you or wants to promote you, wants to lift you up, he takes a debt to it. Anytime God wants to promote you, you may be suffering all your life. But in the spirit realm, God has said in the month of March, you know, on the day 7 of March, you will receive a promotion that will change your life. But in the spirit realm, you are still, you no, know, in, the, in the natural realm, you are still hungry, empty, no money, no promotion. But spiritually, a death is written. And say, on this day, you will be lifted. That is actually God's ideology, but the enemy copies it. You remember, when they wanted to revenge, there was also a death attached to it. Hello, somebody. When they wanted to revenge, we were told on, on, on Esther 8, verse 11. Esther 8, 11. Also, they took a date to wipe away the ones that wanted to kill them. The king's decree gave the Jews on every city authority to unite to defend their lives. They were allowed to kill, slaughter, and annihilate any, anyone of any nationality or province who might attack them, all their children and wives, and to take the property amen, of their enemies. Keep going. Keep going. The, the day chosen for this event 
throughout the province of King Sisters was March 7 of the next year. When God had given them favor, through who? Through Esther. They were also to choose a debt to wipe away their enemy. Anytime heaven wants to promote you, he tacks a debt on that spiritually. There will always be a debt. It may be on your forehead. There's a debt there that 2004, the month of August, you've been married with a, no, no, to a, one of the richest men on earth. But right now, you're not even able to pay your school fee. You're looking empty, bored, you know, sometimes wanting to take your life, but in the spirit, you are Elon Musk's wife. <laughs> Hello, somebody. But the debt, the tag is already on your forehead. There are many of you right now, you carry the tag of God on your neck. That's a badge of the Holy Ghost. Hello, somebody, that you carry anywhere you go. Written, this one is approved to become. Hello, somebody. But in the natural realm, you see, oh, Lord, it's not working. In the natural realm, you are sick, broken, tired. I wanting to take your life. But in the spirit, you are the voice the nation is waiting for. And there are many of you here right now that have voice. You are voiced in the hand of God. Hello, somebody. You are here listening to the sound of my voice. But in the realm of the spirit, you are the greatest evangelist that has been nominated by God. Amen. And it will not be long you will become. There is a debt on your forehead. So if you know about this debt, you will not cry one more time. Oh, you're not even talking to me. You will not cry one more time in your life. If you have watched the match, like the, we have women are playing now. I'm, I'm just telling my kids the other day, I say women shouldn't be playing football. Well, my daughter, they just, you know, they came after me, you know. I say, I say women should just do that. They shouldn't play football because uh, some, some, please don't come after me. You're right. I'm not against women. I said because, I, I said to them, I said, look at some of our, our, our girls from my country. I said, some of them are looking like men. <laughs> my daughter said, don't say that, dad. Don't say that. Anybody can do what they want to do. I said, no, women should. I said, but women should, don't go. There's war in Ukraine. We don't see women, you know, some, some shooting in the world front. They can help for logistics. Though they say, no, that is war. That is why. This is football. <laughs> <laughs> my, my daughters, we are, the boys were quiet, but the girls were fighting me. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Oh, glory. Jesus, help me. So you may be there looking like nobody talk, cares about me. Nobody wants me. But in the realms of the spirit, you are the voice in time. It took David how many years? to become the young lad. He was the king. He was going to be a, a reigning king for about 40 years. Yet he was busy running around. Hello, somebody. If you have watched the match of your future, hello, somebody, you have watched it for real, no matter what you're seeing now, you'll be laughing, ho, 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 because I know how this match will end. Have you watched a match, a, a ro rugby game or whatever match, and and your friends came back and watched it later, and you are in that same room with your friend. And he, she, he or she is shouting, screaming because he doesn't know the score. But you that knows the score, you just relax as though nothing is happening because he knew how it ended. If you know how your life went, my God, you will, you will be celebrating Jesus with me right now. So if you have paid the price, You've humbled yourself and you are in the place of becoming. Some of you have some sudden sicknesses in your body. And you are, Lord, this sickness is still here. What am I going to do? In fact, yesterday, God put in my heart, we need to plan a healing program. The Lord said, no one, we should not wait for anybody from America or from any other part of the world to do it for us. We need to start plan, you know, doing healing programs here. We can't be going there to do healings. 
and people get healed. And, and sometimes one of the reasons we, I keep quiet here because people are not hungry. We've seen a lot of healing. You people know it. Especially when we go outside. But here, people are not hungry. So I don't want to waste my energy. Their, their GP is their God. Nobody say, let me go to God first. It's always they keep injecting them, giving them drugs, all sort of drugs. No one seeks God. And that is why if you don't pull the anointing, the anointing doesn't manifest. One of the reasons when you come to church, you're preaching, and the anointing, you know, the anointing increases, the presence of the anointing increases, is because there are some folks in the, in the, in, in the audience that is pulling the anointing. If you don't have the pe people that pulls from the anointing, the anointing doesn't increase. Are we talking to somebody? So we need to start our healing you know, ministry. We need to start doing healing programs again. Because so many people are sick. And if the gospel of Jesus must gain root in this country, the place of healing must be involved. Amen. Hello, somebody. What will take you, to, you know, 2,000 messages? If we, if we take you 2,000 messages to convince an unbeliever, one rugged healing could convince them. Convince them. By the time you know it, they start thinking of your Jesus. So we need the place of healing. And if you came here today with sickness, in the name of Jesus, I condemn that sickness now. I condemn that sickness right now. I condemn that sickness now. In the name of Jesus. That sickness is condemned and dried up. I condemn that sickness in your body. And I cause it to dry up now. I cause it to dry up now. I cause it to dry up now. Anything in your body, I cause it. Anything that is growing in your body, let it die a natural death. Die a natural death. Die a natural death. Die a natural death. In the name of Jesus. You can check yourself now. You came here with sickness, with headache, with stomach pain. It's gone already. It's gone already. It's gone already. In the name of Jesus. So we need to start doing that which God has called us to do. Do you know, do I give you a little bit more? A little bit more? I'm thinking of our young people out there. Maybe they're not used to long service. Can I give a little bit more? <laughs> Hello, somebody. Do you know for Esther to go to the presence of the king, she needed to humble herself. Are we still here? Chapter Esther, chapter 3, 13, 4, 13 to 16. He needed, you see, fasting, prayer and fasting humbles you. If you see anybody that is always, oh, 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 give them five days dry fasting. <laughs> Even if your flesh is always up, all right? Just go into five days dry fasting. When I went here to go to Bible school, I just needed God. So I decided to do, at that time I haven't done that long. I used to do like three days. So I decided to do five days or seven days. I can't remember dry fasting. I didn't even know, if you can't do that again, Fasting without water sometimes not good for our head. I didn't, I didn't take some water. I didn't eat for five days. No water. By the time I came out from that room, all right, you, fasting is something I, I do because I know it's good to keep you going. So I'm talking of then, but I've done all sort of crazy waiting on the Lord. So then, by the time I came out of that room, I was like this. No matter how my shoulder, you know, is talking to me. I will not even reply you. Hello, somebody. It's not one of the reasons you are still alive. Anybody? Oh, oh. You know why? Because too much flesh. Oh, you're not even talking. Too m the, the reason you react, anytime you react to your husband, to your wife, every time, fine. It's because of too much flesh. Cut it down. Take some waiting. If you always react and, oh, he doesn't like me. <laughs> I, I went to home. The one lady told me, my husband doesn't like me enough. 
doesn't love me. You, some, you know why we notice that sometimes? Because in our flesh, if you're dead, the dead man doesn't talk in her. Sometimes you need to put yourself on the altar of what? Crucifying of the flesh. Where somebody will do something, you look at this, it is well. It is well. <laughs> and they say, why is it like this? You know, because you don't even have power to talk. So Esther, look at what happened. Mordecai sent this reply to Esther. Don't think for a moment that because you are the palace, you are in the palace, you will escape when all other Jews are king. Many of you not think my job, and I have a job, I have security, I don't need to pray. If you don't pray today, you will lose that job. Hello, somebody. You think, no, oh, I have a pal and wonderful marriage. It's all cool. If the, the, the devil is always looking for crisis, if the devil sees you enjoying your marriage, it's okay, here's the next person. So this is the moment to pray. So when she was wanted to give excuse, some of you always, wow, I didn't come to church because I have headache. In this church, God hears headache. You don't need to stay home because you have headache. It's lack of, because of lack of faith. Because you have headache, that is why you must come to the hands of God. You say, oh, praise God. Oh, tomorrow is Sunday. I'm going to be healed on Sunday. You are giving excuse because your flesh is still alive. Dead people don't give excuse. She was giving excuse. You know, I, you know, nobody can go and see the king because of, you know, you don't see the king at this time. Mordecai said, be careful. He said, you're talking like this because you don't know what is coming. Some of you don't know what is coming. That is why you're still like a baby lukewarm Christian. No prayer, no holy living, no, you know, no reading of the world because you don't know what is coming. Hello, somebody. He said, if you keep quiet at a time like this, deliverance and relief for the Jews will arise from some other place. But you and your relatives will die. Who knows if perhaps you will, you, you will make queen for just such a time as this. Some of you, God have given you so much money, you don't give to nobody. Who knows if that money was given to you for a time such as this. Amen. That no matter what we say, you just say, I'm not giving to them. You think that the pastor is looking for your money. Hello, somebody. You think that somebody like me can do a great business and manage it well. I am doing this thing because God called me by force and by fire. Amen. If not because it's by force, I will not do it. <laughs> I answer this calling because it was by force and by fire. I run for some time. I really wrong. I don't want to go into the story. It's not because I'm looking for anybody's money. So you come to church, you are not giving, but God has blessed you. You don't know if that blessing is given to you for such a, such a, a time as this. Maybe that is, that is why God put you in that company. To keep you in that place. So that you can give and build his kingdom. If you are not willing to build his kingdom, whose kingdom will you be building? That means you're building the kingdom of the devil. You come, everybody's giving in the kingdom, and you're there. You are playing big ball, hard and hard. The day God will release crisis, everything you have will be taken because you refuse to make sacrifice on the altar of God. He will allow you to make that sacrifice on the altar of the devil. You give your money to lawyers, give it to court, give it to sickness. Are we talking somewhere? Keep going. He says now, now immediately Esther heard what Naaman said. I was thinking about this. When we come to church, the world is preached. What do you do with the world? Do you go home just the same way? After you have heard the word of God, what do you do with it? The reason some of us don't change is because we are not doing anything with the word of God. You heard it. Hello, somebody. But he went from this ear and then flew away from another ear. The Bible says, then, then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai. What Mordecai said, touch her. Esther told, how do I get into the presence of the king? He said, go and gather together all the Jews of Susa and, fa and fast for me. That word is, go be humble for me. Fasting makes you humble. 
do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. In other words, go and learn to be humble. My, my maids and I will do the same. And then, though it is against the law, I will go into, into, I will go in to see the king. If I must die, I must die. Then how do I go to see the king? How? Is that the only way I can be able to, you know, to penetrate the face of the king? Is to fast. Is to go humble. Hello, somebody. If you want to receive anything from a higher realm, you need to humble yourself. Even as I'm talking now, it's raining. You need to go what? Go humble. That was how Esther was able to penetrate the face of the king. Because she humbled herself before God. And went to the presence of the king humble. Many of you today have lost thrones and crowns. Because of simple thing, humility is not there. We don't follow instruction. We do what we want. Even if you come to church, you don't truly belong there. You belong to too many churches. You're in this church. You're in this church. You, everyone, have a family where you belong. Hello, somebody. You are in every program in the city. Too many voices, and I don't. I don't ask you not to go to places. But if you find yourself everywhere in this church or that church, you'll be so confused. Too many voices. But have you actually worked out your salvation with what you have heard? Where you worship? Have you, uh, what have you done with that? It's not about hearing. It's about doing. What you have heard over the years, what have you done with it? You're not meant to be in every field with feed more. You're not meant to be in every grocery shop. You're not meant to be in every bank. You're not meant to bank with every bank, even though they are bank. I know some of you don't like here now, but it's okay. Many years you will know. I wish you talking. Anyway, the, the revelation here, Esther humbled himself and went to the presence of the king. And the Lord said to me, I'm going to close soon, please be with me. And the Lord said, do you want to receive something from me? Do you want to receive something from men? You need to humble yourself. I wish to hear. This message, I told you that this word, humility, is, can be more powerful than 40 days fasting. You can fast for many years, yet it doesn't open up for you. Because of simple prescription, you're not applying. I wish to hear some more. What removes Vashti from power? Do you know what removed her from power? The king commanded Vashti. I said, Vashti, I want you to call and them display your beauty. If you read from 10, I think, it's the one from 10. All you need to do, come on, display your beauty. Vashti says she's not coming. We all have different interpretations. Anyhow you look at it, you will see something to say. Maybe she, maybe she was right because they probably, have, they probably were drunk and they wanted Vashti to come and show. Vashti said, but I'm not coming. But that's not the problem. He is the king. Esther, chapter 1, verse 4. The man is the king. The Bible said the, where there is the word of the king is what power. You are not the king. The king said to Vashti, I'm going to, Vashti, where are you? Vashti, so I'm going to be fine. <laughs> he said, on the seventh day of the feast, when King Cessus was in high spirit because of the wine, he told the seven eunuchs who attended him, Mehu, Mehuman, Mishta, Habona, Bikta, Ab 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 Abakta, Zekta, and Kakas, okay, say, to bring Queen Vashti to him. What, what this, with a royal crown, on her head. The man did not say, don't come with a royal crown. He said, Put your royal crown because you are still the queen. <laughs> Hello, on her head. He wanted the nobles and all the other men to gaze on her beauty for she was very beautiful woman just like every one of you here. Yeah. Although my wife was more beautiful than her. Yeah. Hello, somebody. I'm telling you, 
you can take it to the bank. Oh, glory to God, you're too calm. <laughs> what is, see, to bring what Queen Vashti, I, I've already it. But she, okay. But when they convey the king's order to Queen Vashti, she refused to come. Why this word? He refused to come. This made the king furious and he burned with anger. He is the king. You are not the king. Where there is word of the king, the Bible says there is what? Power. All you need to do to still remain queen is to put your crown. Yes, I'm beautiful. Hello, somebody. Two minutes you're down and your crown will continue to be on your head. Are we talking? Two minutes. All you need is to come and just do uh, just some of the things you're fighting with and for. It's, it doesn't want it. I'm not coming. I'm not coming. One minute. Here's the king. <clears throat> That's what he wants. Hello, somebody. And the word, <coughs> sorry, the word of the king is final. Say the word of the king is final. You can see that in a, 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 um, Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4. Ecclesiastes 8 verse 4. So if you know that this man is the king, why don't you do what he says? By the way, you're not coming crownless. You're still coming with crown. Am I helping somebody? Oh, you're quiet. Am I helping somebody? His command is backed by great power. Use another translation. No one can, you know, resist or question it. Use another translation. KJV. Use KJV. Uh, where the word of the king is, there is what power. That is what Novashti did not understand. And who may say unto him, what does die? What, what does die? Who may say unto him, what does die? When the king has spoken, power backs up his word. No one resists the word of the king. Just like when God speaks, no matter your pain, your challenge, or you've been through for years, once God has spoken and said that problem is revised, no matter the pain, by the time you know it, when that day comes, everything revises. The word of king, where there is the word of, of God, there is power. So, Vashti, do you not think that Vashti regretted her decision. Are you here? Don't sleep with me, somebody. Is there anybody sleeping? I see somebody sleeping. Don't you think that vast for you, the throne that used to be yours. Now another woman by name Esther, a foreigner, is now sitting on that throne. I'm telling you that Vashti regretted her decision when she was dethroned. You shall not be dethroned. Amen. I say you will not be dethroned. He regretted that simple decision. <laughs> if you knew what Vashti, if we have insight into the life of Vashti, oh my God, you will feel for her. Yesterday the Holy Ghost told me Vashti became the most frustrated woman. All of a sudden, Simple because of that decision. The crown that she used to wear was taken from her and gave to another woman. So many people have been disrobed or derobed. You know when you have robe, the, your robe, every high priest have robe. Their robe been taken from them. Do you know how the robe power was taken from her man? No, the king said, all oh, the signet ring I've given to him. The Bible said he took it back. The land the king gave to him, he took it back and gave to Mordecai. When you are not humble, God can derob you. May God forbid. A lot of people, are, they are not putting no spiritual garment anymore. No garment of protection. No garment of exhortation. No garment of lifting. No garment of protection. Because... They have become God to themselves. They have choose to do their own things. They don't listen to instruction. 
They don't follow authority. They don't obey. God have structures and hierarchy. Anywhere you go, if you're not willing to obey, why does even fathers, children fall out with the parents and parents fall, parents fall out with the children? Because either they, because the child refuses to obey or maybe the parents are not doing the right thing. If you want to be exalted, if you want to be lifted, if you want to become, you need the culture of humility. Choose to beat down your shoulder. I beat my own all the time. Keep beating it down. Choose to beat it down. Follow men that has done twice what you are trying to do once. Bless somebody. When men like that talk to you, listen to them. That's why we have fathers in the faith. They've been through so much. Sometimes, when you see a father in the faith, they may not dress well. They may not even speak good English. Hello, somebody. They may look broken. But if one word from their mouth will save your life. You may have many clothes, but not many rags than them. They have worn so many clothes, and now they have rags. But they have many beautiful clothes. They, but they've been putting on clothes, and these have become rag. And they have gained experience like that. If we do the will of God, we have a beautiful life. Is there anybody here today who wants to say, God, use me. Father, do something with me. I don't need to jump or shout for you to receive something. Ask yourself, have you caused so much problem for yourself? Have you caused so much problem for your family? Have you caused so much problem for your children? This is what you must ask yourself. Unless you're ready to answer this question, you will not do anything to start beating down your shoulder from time to time. Hello, somebody. You see, no matter your degree, you may have 10 PhD. If people can't work with you, they will sack you. Have you seen people that were brought into a company and then the band discovered that that person is causing a lot of tension. Even though that person is skillful, but that person is causing tension among his peers. What do they do? They remove them. So that there will be peace in the company. Though they have good degree. Hello, somebody. Sometimes it's, it's, it's their degree that is actually causing their problem. They think I'm more qualified than you. You can't tell me what to do. You can't tell me where to go. You lost somebody. And even some of us in the church, the pastor can't tell me where to go. I can go anywhere. Yeah. When you have children, sometimes you tell them where to go. Even when we are growing up, there are people, our fathers, we say, see that family, be careful. If you don't listen to them, you will eat poison. Are we talking to money? If you don't know, well, I'm, a, I'm a big boy. They've been living in that village for a long time. And they know who is who. If they say, son, when I was coming up from Bethlehem, the way that man looked at me, I know he doesn't like our family. Be careful. And you refuse. You can marry their daughter. Hello, <laughs> somebody. Oh, that's all. You will go through hell because you refuse to listen. Do you think that everything that has been preached in the media today is sermon? Many believers are rebellious. They are not stable, not steady in the church because of they are hearing too many things. Even though it sounds like sermon, they are drinking all sorts of water. Some of those water is from a rotten borehole, rotten, um, what do you call it? Pipe burn water. Hey, listen, somebody. Do you know the, the pipe you drink from matters a lot? Water, you may say yes, it's water, but the pipe you are drinking from matters so much. Not every pipe is clean. So, God's people, if you want to live long, do. The word of God. Say, I will do the word of the king. Say, we don't want to say, I will 
do the word of the king. And so shall it be unto you. I say, so shall it be unto you. I say, so shall it be unto you. In the name of Jesus. And many of you here today, closing now, I'm going to be praying for kids. Some of you are history makers. You are nation changers. You have you no know, greater mantle on your forehead. Right now, all you're seeing is pain, limitation, but on your head, you have mantle that is different from every other mantle in the city. Amen. It doesn't matter who have degraded you and say some negative things against you. When I came to this nation, I went through so much, I was crying and crying like a baby. And I went to a program. At that time, I was going through so much. And the man of God looked at me. He said, you have been used and abused. And that's exactly what, where I was at the time. He said, but in this nation, he said, God, we're in the same place. He said, God will lift you. Amen. I didn't even tell the man of God that I, that I was a man of God. I just went there. I need prayer. I just need help. Some of you say, no, but I know how to pray too. Hello, somebody. And uh, that thing, the man of God, even those who mistreated me, have all closed down. Am I wasting your time? Those who mistreated me have closed down. And I know what I'm talking about. And some of you who don't know what I'm talking about. I close down. There are certain mantles you don't mistreat. I can assure you. There are certain mantles you don't mistreat. Certain mantles are dangerous. You don't call certain mantles bow head. If you call certain mantles, boar head mantles, lion will come out from the bush and eat you up. And that is what so many believers don't know. There are certain mantles you listen to. There are few people in our church, they're not here now. They, ma a man was coming into their life. I told him, say, don't marry that person. All of them have come back to say to me, I'm sorry for not listening. Follow people that have done twice. What you're trying to do was one. They always call, keep calling me and telling me of all the problems. I said, I told you. She called my wife. Said, Anytime I called, I called, I called. Apostle, he will always say, I told you, I told you. But what will I say? Because you refuse to listen. Call your baby listen if you don't listen. So, so that will be reminding you. I wish to hear. Thank you, Jesus. Shall we stand up and give him praise? Thank you, Jesus. Just bless his name. Yesterday we, we did baptism for our, young, our children from 10 years. And today we just want to pray on them and ask the Holy Spirit to feel them. Hello, somebody. If you, came, if you came here this morning sick, I wanted to check your body. I believe God have already healed you. Hello, somebody. I believe God have already healed you. If you came here sick, I want you to check your body now. Check your body now. Check your body now. If you came here with pain on your stomach, I want you to check it. Give me a hand. Say, Lord Jesus, I receive grace I've never received before. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Bring the case while I'm. Father, I release blessing on your daughter. Every blessing you need in this season, I release it on you. <laughs> I break yokes. Break yokes. 
and I release abundance, financial grace on you. In the name of Jesus. I thought you were bringing the keys that did baptism. Why do you bring all the keys? Amen. Yeah, bring. Okay, no problem. Let all of them come. Please open your mouth and begin to thank God. Say, Father, give me grace to humble myself. Father, give me grace to humble myself. Somebody pray that prayer. Masha Kalabahanda. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody pray that prayer. Father, give me the grace to humble myself. Somebody pray that prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Say, Father, I need your grace. Lord, I need your grace. King of King, I need your grace. Somebody pray that prayer. This topic is a serious issue. Most of us are dealing with it. If you must go far in your walk with God, you need to humble yourself. You need this aspect. You need this grace to humble yourself. Somebody pray that prayer. Say, oh Lord, I need your grace to walk in humility for your glory. Somebody open your mind and pray that prayer. Ho shaka palahanda. Reka pazeka labahanda. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, King of Kings. Thank you, Lord of Lord. In the name of Jesus. I feel that some of you are not praying. You need to open your mind. Let there be hunger in the house. Intensify the hunger. Intensify the hunger. Rama zoka palahala zozi hand. Jechata kapahala ya. Father, I worship you. King of King, I worship you. Lord of Lord, I worship you. Father, give us the grace of God to do the right thing, live the right way, walk in your way in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus, anything that is opposing me as a result of my witness, my moral witness, I renounce those weakness right now. I renounce those weakness right now. I renounce those weakness right now. Somebody pray that prayer. Some of us have been opposed spiritually because of our moral weakness. Because of our moral weakness. And we have been opposed. We need God to take away those things from us. We need God to help us. Many of you are good people, but one weakness has stood as your limitation. Your limitation is as a result of that weakness, and you want God to take it away. What is that, is that that is opposing your glory, opposing your person, opposing your calling? What is that that brought so much tension on your family? Somebody pray about it before I pray for the children. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. I would have done altar call, but I wouldn't do the father because of, of the, the case we have here. Those of you that, that baptized yesterday, please, can you, yesterday, can you raise up your hand if you baptized? All the ones, some of you from 10 and above. All right. One, two. All right. The, okay, the, you are the ones that baptized, right? Okay. I want those of you that baptized to come here. Come, let the keys go be behind you. Some of, some of those of you, come, come here. The baptized, come here, okay? Okay, uh, all our do I, go out there back. I'm gonna come to you. I'm gonna come to you guys later, okay? Wonderful people. So, those of you that baptized, can you come here? All right. Now, this, those of them that baptized, don't worry, I'm gonna get to you, all right? Good boy. I go there. Yeah, I'm gonna get to other ones. Everyone, uh, come here, son. Come here, good boy. 
Yeah. Thank you. All right. Um, please, I will pray for everybody, all right? We're going to pray for everybody. Now, this um, children, most of them are 10 and above here. They've been, we do a mansion baptism. And after baptism, we pray for Holy Ghost baptism. They've been taught on baptism and they've been taught as regard to the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. And their teachers want us to pray for them. You know, some of them, this prayer we're going to pray today is going to fuel them. A lot will change in their life. Amen. After today, so much will happen to them. Some of them will begin to see a vision. We're going to receive prophetic word. Many of them were, even when they went to pray, they were speaking tongues. Amen. So I want all the parents, please take notice because things is going to change. What we are doing now is a spiritual thing. So I, I want everyone, please stretch your hand towards them. Stretch your hand toward them. Everyone, we are praying for toward the children. We are praying, all the children, pray, pray for them. We are praying for everyone. But this one, the baptized, wanted to pray that they will be few. God is going to use them mightily. They will be useful in their land. Somebody pray for them. <coughs> Open your mouth now. Open your mouth, everyone. All of you sit in you know, a standing place. We, are, we want to impart our children. Let's you know, put signage of prayer together. Put prayer together. Let's release something. Holy Spirit of the living God. Oh, say in the name of Jesus, we release the gift of the Spirit on all these children for God's glory. We can pray that prayer for the I wonder with all your heart, pray for these children. They will live for God. They will bring glory to God. They will honor God. They will be useful and relevant in this nation. The enemy will not lay hands on them. Everybody pray. Somebody cry out for these children. The enemy is busy laying hands on children around the world, twisting their mind. But these children, their minds will not be twisted. They will serve God. They will honor God. They will bring glory to God all their life. They will see the goodness of God. Somebody cry out for them. Oh, your life, Ashaka. Ask the Lord to fill them. Ask the Lord to fill them. Ask the Lord to fill them. Fill them up. Fill them up. Fill them up. Father, we cry for our children, Lord. We cry for our children, Lord. They will serve you. They will honor you. They will encounter tell you on a daily basis. Do something on their life and in their life. Father, do something. Father, do something. Oh, Yalaba, Shalaba Kato, Recha Toya Gabara, Reja Jakata. Lord, do something, do something, do something. Let your spirit, Janta Kata, Jakata Yara, Jata Chaya, Jerekata Yaga, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus, still be in the spirit, be in the spirit. I want every one of you, all the children, especially those of you that baptized yesterday, say, Dear Lord Jesus, from today, I welcome you into my life to be the Lord of my life. I renounce my weaknesses. I renounce anything I do that is not right. I renounce it now. And from today, Lord Jesus, I want you to come into my heart. Come and rule me. Holy Spirit, come and fill me up for your glory. As you fill me today, 
I will use the grace I receive to serve you. Make me a better person, a better child. Use me greatly. Use me powerfully. Let thy spirit fuel me up. Fuel me up. Lord Jesus, fuel me with your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Everyone stretch your hand. Stretch your hand as I lay hand on them quickly. Father, fuel her up. Keep praying for them. Feel her or be in the spirit, every one of you. I know they have explained to you. Some of you might speak in tongue here or when you get home, when you're praying. You see this thing we do, Reba Shakala behind. Some of you will be doing it. In the name of Jesus. Please, everybody, stretch your hand on them. In the name of Jesus, Father, fill her up. In the name of Jesus, say, I receive Holy Spirit. Fill me up with power. Fill me up with grace. Fill me up in the name of Jesus. Everybody keep praying for them. Ask God to fill them up. We want God to raise great evangelists, great ministers, great business people, great teachers. We want God to raise great CEOs out of them and in them. Lord, feed them up. Feed them up. Feed them up. In the name of Jesus. Feed them up from today. Let new things happen to them. Let what you've never experienced before and in an encounter you've never had before to come on you fill her up Lord Jesus in the name of Jesus somebody pray for them Lord feed them up keep praying every one of you keep asking God to fill you up say Lord touch me touch me touch me touch me Father fill this ones up for your glory for your glory in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus father all this ones I ask you to fill them up now in the name of Jesus and every other person raise up your hand all of you raise up your hand like this all the children raise up your hand say Jesus fill me up with the Holy Spirit Jesus Fill me up with the Holy Spirit. Jesus, fill me up with the Holy Spirit. Somebody, those of you who know how to speak in tongues in the audience, I want you to speak in tongues on their behalf. 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 Rabba Shaka. As God, let fire touch them. 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 Holy fire touch them. Somebody sticks in the spirit. Raka takala behind them. Holy fire touch them. Holy fire touch them. Touch them. Touch them. Touch them. Is there anyhow you're feeling? Okay. Holy Ghost. Somebody pray up for Holy Ghost. Touch our children. Holy Ghost. Touch our children. Father, open up their soul. Open up their spirit. Father, open her up in the name of Jesus. Open her up. Open her up. Oh, Jesus. 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 Jesus, oh, la ba 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 shaka la ba handa. Up, feed him 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 up, feed the children up. Let a mantle of fire rest on you. Mantle of fire rest on you. Mantle of fire rest on you. 
Man till the fire rest on you. Man till the fire rest on you. Man till the fire rest on you. Kalaba shatalaba. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for our children. Father, you begin to use them in the prophetic. You will use them to heal. All of them, Lord. Use them to release word of faith. Use them to pray. Pray for their family. Pray for their generation. Father, all of them. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. You will do something in their life. From today, new oil rests on you. You become the best in this nation. You become the best in this nation. You become the best in this nation. Every one of you. You will rule this nation. You will reign. You will preach the gospel. The grace of Almighty is on you. The fire of Almighty is on you. The oil of Almighty is on you. Every one of you. You will do what you've never done before. What you've never done before. What you've never done before. Oh, you will not be washed away. The enemy will not waste you. Hell will not waste you. The demon in this nation will not waste you. You are the voice of the future. The voice of the future. The voice of the future. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, King of Kings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, the kids can go back. Thank you for the infilling. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. We're going to close now. We're going to close now. Did anybody have any revelation? When we're praying, during preaching, or anything you want to share, anything, God show you anything. If God show you something, just excuse me. Yeah, go on. Is that I saw, I first saw a, an angel, he was like touching the, his, even before Apostle touched them and was blessing them. The angel was walking through and like touching their heads and anointing them. And then a second angel was over here and was seated on a rock. And then he had a book and like um, a feathered pen and he was like writing names or something. And then after that, when Apostle was releasing fire on them, it's like there was like a river of fire on top of their heads and was like moving through and from. So I believe that God did something mighty. So glory to God. Amen. All right. Is there any other person? Hallelujah. Is there any other person that you saw something? Don't, don't hide it because I believe this is, there's a traffic here in the spirit realm. Any other person? If not, oh, my heart, Shabbat. We're going to close. Now, casting, come. Let me pray for you out here that you live with. Hello, sir. You're welcome. Thank you for coming today. Please stand up, sir. What do you do? What do you do, sir? Eh? Yeah, compassionate minister. So you're in the ministry. You're a pastor? Pastor, okay. But you're in, doing something. Kirsten, please come. I'm almost done. I want to release something. All the finances you need, the grace you need, the backing you need. I release it today. Let the special mantle come on you now. Special fire rest on you. You break. Limitation break. Walk into something special. Walk into something new. Walk into something new. Let something new happen to you. live here today. Let new doors open. God will bring help us. We not just only help you physically, but we bring finances. I inject special oil. (laughs) 
receive. Lift up your hands. Say, Lord, can I receive special mantle for this assignment? Lord Jesus, I receive special mantle for this assignment. I impart something on you. Go and succeed. In the name of Jesus. Come, brother. Come. You're living when? Eh? Yeah. All right. So you'll not be here until next Sunday. All right. Everybody pray for him. People keep going to Australia. Australia, we command you guys to start coming to New Zealand. Amen, somebody. All right, pray for him. Father, this is your son. Oh, glory to God. We pray for preservation. We pray for protection. We pray above all that you will not depart from the pathway of God. We pray that God will structure you in the way he would want you to follow in that nation. We pray that you will bring glory to God Almighty. You will not die before your time. You will live your long. We command that nation to obey you. We frustrate the spirit that frustrates newcomers. That demon that frustrates people that goes new to a city, that travel to a new place, we not see you. We not touch you. We not tamper you. We secure your destiny in the blood of the Son of God. We pray that everything we bow before you in that nation and we decree that that nation will serve you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Go in the power of your might. Oh God, the Lord just released something. I don't know what they released. Them. I'm doing my left hand side. Something was just released. Oh God, God have released something on you. Thank you Jesus. I know what I'm talking about. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Take the oil now more than you can carry. Take the oil more than you can handle. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for a fresh oil, fresh presence, fresh grace, fresh oil, fresh presence, fresh grace. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Jesus, name it is done. It is done. Something entered you. Oh. Is there anybody checking your body? You felt sick. And you know that something happened to you. I'm about, I'm about to close. I know it was the time now. All right. We're five minutes late. Is there anybody here? You fed sick and you came. You fed us something has happened to you. Because I know even now there's this healing anointing. A healing anointing. You, you feel that something has happened to you. When you came, you know. Feel healing anointing. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Is it for prayer or for testimony? Eh? Eh, Father? Now, say in Jesus' name, say in Jesus' name, I receive my healing. I command your kidneys, I command every part of your body, your leg, touch! In Jesus' name. Holy Ghost touch. Holy Ghost touch. Holy Ghost touch. I restore back your body. I restore back every part of you that need healing. Receive. 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 Holy Ghost move. Holy Ghost move. Holy Ghost move. Holy Spirit move. Heal him. Father, I release on the wife. Receive for him and for yourself. <laughs> Father, hear this from me. Everybody stretch your hands. Say, Lord Jesus, heal them of any illness tormenting them. Let it be gone now. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I want to close now. Oh, hallelujah. I just want to pray. I don't know why this happened. Last time your wife was sitting there, I was preaching, I saw a light on her. And in the midst of my preaching today, I saw a light on your neck too. Just come like a star. I don't know what it is. Father, whatever you're doing for this family, continue to do it. Father, let your light shine on them. Break down any frustration. <laughs> Say we receive fire. The young people say in Jesus' name that we receive the fire of the Holy Ghost. Lift up your hand. Say I receive fire of the Holy Ghost. Every one of you go home with fire of God in the name of Jesus. Problem solved. Man things reduced to nothing. Go and win. Go and become. Go and reign in the name of Jesus. And everybody shout, Amen. Hallelujah. Remember our fast, and I want to share the grace please before you go. Our fasting is starting next week. But this week we've made it apart from Bible study. This week is all free. So you can take time. It's going to be 31 days of mercy. We're going to ask God to show us mercy on every aspect of, aspect of your life where you need mercy. God will show mercy. Amen. It's going to be a new discovery of destiny. So this week, apart from Wednesday, it's all free.